In this video, we're going to discuss different metrics for solute concentration, including molality and molarity. So in the notation that we've discussed previously for liquid-liquid solutions, whenever we have a mole fraction of a component which is approaching 1, or approaching the entire solution being pure liquid 1, then that component would be referred to as a solvent. And if we have another component such that its mole fraction is approximately zero, then that would be something which is very, very dilute and only sparingly soluble, perhaps, and we call that the solute. So we're going to have this notation throughout this series of videos of mole of chi 1, 1 being solvent, and 2 being the solute. And this is going to extend as well into, we're going to be looking now at solid liquid solutions, where we have a solid solute going into some liquid solvent. Okay, and we also have, in addition to mole fraction, we have the definition of activity, where we have the activity of the solvent was equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid under those same given conditions. So the liquid when its mole fraction is one, exactly. And then you have uh, different activity coefficients, which we can define. We have the activity coefficient of the solvent is its activity divided by its mole fraction. So when we have an ideal uh, solvent, when we have an ideal solution, remember that our activity coefficient is going to 1 because the activity is kind of a, an analog for the mole fraction in all of our equations whenever things do not behave exactly ideally. But it reduces just to Raoul's law under ideal conditions. Okay, so we're going to now define several metrics for the concentration of a given solute. So the first one is the mole fraction, which we've defined before, but we're just going to state again for good measure and consistency within this video. So that's just the number of moles of the solute divided by number of moles of solvent plus number of moles of solute. And this would be the case for a binary solution where there are only two components. If there were more components, it would be the sum of the moles of all the components of the solution. So that, as I said, is mole fraction. Then we have a new definition, which is molality. And molality is equal to the number of moles of the solute that is present and dissolved in one kilogram of solvent. So the number of moles per every, per every kilogram of solvent and that is called molality. So if we have 10 moles dissolved in 10 kilograms of solvent, then that is a one molal solution. And also, which we should remember from general chemistry, in addition to molality, we have molarity, <clears throat> which we're going to signify by this lowercase c. Molality was signified by a lowercase m. And that's going to be the number of moles of the solute per every 1,000 milliliters of solution. So if we have <clears throat> 10 moles of solvent in 10,000 milliliters or 10 liters of solution, then that would be a 1 molar solution for that solute. That is molarity. Okay, so for each of these, we're going to define different activities and activity coefficients <clears throat> for each of these cases and uh, define them appropriately such that they obey certain limiting behavior. So in terms of mole fraction, let me just go ahead and use the same colors for these. We have mole fraction, the activity of the solute measured in terms of mole fraction. So the activity, the A, for the solute, component 2, measured with respect to mole fraction, chi. That is going to go to, or approach, the mole fraction of the solute 
as the mole fraction of the solute approaches zero. So in the limit of very, very dilute solutions, in the limit of the mole fraction going to zero, then the solute will behave ideally, and we will have the activity of the solute will approach the mole fraction when its activity is defined in terms of the mole fraction. In terms of molality, we again have a, an activity coefficient defined for the solute in terms of molality, and that is going to approach the molality of the solute as the molality approaches zero. I'm sure you can start to see this trend here and you probably guess what's coming next. We have similarly an activity coefficient, activity defined in terms of molarity, concentration, which approaches the molarity of the solute as the molarity goes to zero. <clears throat> so most of these laws that we're talking about in the upcoming videos are going to be defined for dilute solutions, which are going to to obey this type of ideal behavior as the solution approaches very, very low concentration, very low molality, very low mole fraction, all meaning that is going to be very dilute. And then finally, for each of these, we can define activity coefficients. We can define activity coefficient with respect to mole fraction, which is the mole fraction activity divided by the mole fraction. We can do so for molality, to find an activity coefficient for the solute in terms of molality as the activity A2M divided by molality. And finally, we have the activity coefficient for concentration for component two for the solute is the activity defined in terms of concentration divided by concentration of component two. And I should also mention up here, um, we have the activity of the, sol of the solvent defined in terms of the vapor pressure of the solvent relative to the vapor pressure of the pure solute. And we have similar definitions uh, for our activity our activities of the solute we have in terms of mole fraction it's going to be the vapor pressure of the solute defined divided by the henry's law coefficient in terms of mole fraction in terms of the proper units here you have the same thing defined in terms of a Henry's Law constant for molality, and you have a Henry's Law constant coefficient, or Henry, Henry's Law constant in terms of molarity. So the difference between these is just converting for the proper units. And these vapor pressures may be very, very low because um, these solutes being very, very dilute are going to have very, very low vapor pressures. But this value, these Henry's law coefficients, will also be very small values as well. So you'll take a very small number, also divided by a very small number, and you'll get a finite number as a result. So in principle, in practice, it's actually quite difficult to measure in terms of the activity of the solute in terms of its vapor pressure, because the vapor pressure is so low. But we'll find ways to work around that in future videos, which are going to utilize the vapor pressure of the solvent which will be quite finite and quite close to the vapor pressure of the pure liquid.